my name is Ashley Mills and I'm doing a presentation on my research paper entitled Lesbianist, Lesbianism and Other Themes in Lillian Hellman's The Children's Hour. The Children's Hour is a play written in 1934, right after the United States was emerging from World War I and the Great Depression. It's based on a true story of two teachers in Scotland in the 1800s. They were accused by one of their students, who was named Jane Cummings, of having lesbian relations. Jane told her grandmother and her grandmother had all of the students removed from their hair. The two women took the grandmother to court, oh yeah, excuse me, in a libel case, and they won. But because of the repercussions of the accusation, the damage was already done. Their names were cleared, but no one really cared. They were still treated like outcasts. These real life people actually were the models for Lillian Hellman's characters in the play. The play, which is often considered a melodrama, is based on this big lie. So a melodrama is an emotional play that feeds off of the audience's reactions, it usually uses archetypes, which means that the characters embody a cultural virtue. So for example, in the children's hour, Mary could be seen as the evil and Karen and Martha would be seen as the good. And they often operate on a binary, which means this versus this, and they're opposites. And so if Mary is seen as wholly bad for all of her wicked ways and her lying and her manipulation, then Karen and Martha would have to be seen as wholly good. Some critics argue that they aren't. They use evidence from the way Karen reacts in Act 1 to the lie about where Mary got the flowers. And her punishment was really extreme. She basically grounded Mary to the school building. She couldn't leave. She was not allowed to participate in any recreational activities, even on the weekends. She had to move roommates. It was just really exaggerated. And for a child, it was devastating. And so they say that she didn't show any mercy and that she didn't exhibit what goodness would be. And so if it isn't operating on this binary, if there's no good to counteract Mary's evil, then the archetype theory wouldn't work. And so the only other evidence that could support it being a melodrama is if it's followed a certain form. And that form would be that a threat was posed, that our protagonists would escape from said threat, and then would have a happy ending. As we know, there's not a happy ending. Martha commits suicide. And so because the play doesn't follow this form, it doesn't use archetypes, and we don't have any information about the musical scoring, it's not safe to say that it is a melodrama. Whatever it is, though, um, let's see, I just lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. What I'm trying to say is that if it's not a melodrama, we need to figure out what it is. And so I think that the play is a tragedy. A tragedy tends to follow the form of happy beginnings, which we see very briefly, but we still see it. A problem is introduced, which is when Mary tells her grandmother that she's seen her two teachers having unnatural relations. The problem gets worse and it goes into this crisis mode when Mrs. Tilford pulls all the girls out of the school without even a second thought and basically starts this whole avalanche effect of ruining two women's lives. There's no escape for the heroes, which we see as Karen and Martha lose their libel case, they don't recover. They are banished to their house, basically. They can't leave. There's no one that will sell them anything. So as this problem worsens, it ends tragically, which is Martha's suicide. So the Children's Hour follows this form of a tragedy. And another characteristic of tragedies is that it follows big themes. And so tragedies tend to challenge society in some way. They make the audience rethink some concept that they have. And so in the Children's Hour, there are three big themes that I've come across in my research. The first of which is the big lie. Rumors, gossip, lying. This is what Lillian Hellman herself says is the only theme that matters. The second is lesbianism, homosexuality, and homophobia. And the third is power relationships and abuse of power. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the first theme, the big lie, is Lillian Hellman's sort of brainchild. It's who, it's what she says is the only thing that matters. 
In the 1936 version, um, it was made into a film, they actually removed lesbianism because they didn't think that it would sell to audiences. And so Lillian and Hellman had to rewrite the screenplay to include a different big lie, which would be <clears throat> an affair between Car Karen's fiance and Martha. One argument that is made is that because the big lie is made big because of lesbianism, that the two really can't be separated, although Hellman tries to separate them. What makes lesbianism as a theme interesting is that the word lesbianism, or the word lesbian is never once mentioned in the play. Relationships such as Karen and Martha's were not always considered taboo. But because of this whole rising tension around homosexuality, by the 1930s, two women hugging could have been considered a lesbian relationship. <clears throat> so the play is about a big lie, but the big lie is about lesbianism. What makes it scandalous, though, is the fact that the, it's not necessarily lesbianism, but it's the homophobia around it. So Westbrook, one of my sources says little else unleashes society's destructive wrath like being queer all of mrs tilford's actions in the play are motivated by homophobia she's afraid that the girls are going to be influenced by karen and martha and become lesbians she's afraid that when karen and martha show up at her house that she herself will become lesbian at this time people didn't understand that lesbianism didn't spread like a disease it wasn't an illness that you could catch just for being in the same room as someone who could have been lesbian she didn't stop to check her facts she didn't ask martha and karen if they were lesbians she didn't think to do that she was just completely terrified of the idea of lesbians being in her town that she reacted the way she did which leads me to power relationships, the third theme. And Philip Amato, one of my um, sources, actually says that these relationships operate on a victim-victimizer syndrome. And so it kind of comes full circle by the end of the play. The first one that we see is Karen and Martha. We already know that Karen abuses her power with Mary when she gives her her unjust punishment. And Martha, we see acting similarly to Karen with Mrs. Martyr, her aunt, and she basically throws her out when they decide that they no longer need her services. And Karen, excuse me, Mary and Mrs. Martyr both agree that they don't like the way they're being treated. They feel like the victim because they are the victim. Mary is not satisfied with being the victim. She decides to take it into her own hands and take it upon herself to become a victimizer. We already know that she's a victimizer with her friends. She uses them for money. She uses them for blackmail. And she just wants to control her surroundings. She has control over her grandmother, Mrs. Tilford, because she is an orphan. And so she knows that playing to those weak points in her grandmother's whole self is going to get her what she wants. She's the spoiled grandchild to a grandmother who ha turns a blind eye to all of her granddaughter's wrongdoings. And so at the end of the play, the children are basically running the world of Lancet. The children hold the power and the adults are being really immature with their reactions and how they're handling situations. <clears throat> Finally, we see Mrs. Tilford being the one in power. She represents old money in this old way of thinking. So by calling all of the mothers and having all of the girls removed from the right Doby school, she's exercising her authority. <clears throat> she uses the guys that she's trying to save these girls from lesbianism, but really she is trying to prevent kind of this new cultural way of thinking. And so she wants to preserve what she knows instead of allowing these two women to potentially infect the girls with lesbianism. By the end of the play, we see some type of poetic justice. The play doesn't end with Martha's suicide. And what that tells the audience is that the suicide and lesbianism isn't necessarily the biggest focus. We see that Karen and Mrs. Tilford both have a lesson to be learned. Karen, at the end, extends mercy to Mrs. Tilford. She shows compassion and she shows 
mercy that she didn't show Mary in Act 1. Mrs. Tilford gets her poetic justice, as Tanford Tunk, one of my sources, says. He says that she's guilt-ridden and is now the cage keeper for a monstrous child. She gets what she deserves because now she has to live with this girl for the rest of her life. She gets the guilt. And it brings the story full circle. Everyone has played the victim and everyone has played the victimizer and Karen finally breaks the cycle. Overall, The Children's Hour is not a melodrama. It follows more closely the characteristics of a tragedy. <clears throat> and there are more than one theme. There is more than one theme in the play. These themes, big lie, lesbianism and homophobia, and the power of relationships and authority struggles, don't have to be mutually exclusive. They can all operate in the same field, and they actually make the play more dramatic. It makes it more relatable, and it challenges society to rethink the way that we might have acted in this situation. So in a time when America was really trying to find balance and restore power to pre-Great Depression, pre-World War I, Lillian Hellman was putting a magnifying glass over the small town of Lancet to show what was truly happening on a small scale and potentially the large scale of the entire United States. There was a fear growing about homosexuality and homophobia was running rampant and what lying and gossip and abusing your power could do to people. In just the children's hour, Martha committed suicide because of a lie and because of the way the society was abusing their authority over her. So overall, I hope you learned something. I had a great time researching this and thank you for your time.